This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. All right, it's a very short one, but let me talk around it at the same time, not for too long. Z produces desks for which the standard cost card is as follows. The standard cost card, remember, is the budgeted costs. We're budgeting on materials of 10, labour 6, variable overheads 4. Fixed overheads have been absorbed or charged. I don't care how they've done it irrelevant, maybe they did it at a rate per hour or something, but we've ended up charging $3 per unit. All right? And so, we've got a full cost of 23. Or, remember, the full cost when we've brought in fixed overheads is also called the absorption cost. Twenty-three per unit. And I said a minute ago, without doing full profit statements, because they can't be asked, if we're using absorption costing, every unit is effectively valued at 23. All right? The alternative way of costing, because of all the problem there is with fixed overheads, the problem we had in that test, the, the fact we end up overcharging, undercharging, the alternative marginal costing, if we were doing marginal costing, remember your cost card looks exactly the same except we don't absorb fixed costs. The marginal cost is another word for variable cost. With marginal costing, the cost per unit would be how much here, please? Oh, that was quick. Yes. The total of the variable costs is 20. Uh, we're still paying fixed overheads, of course, but with marginal costing, you don't absorb it in the units. We'll just have, in our profit statements, whatever the total fixed costs are. All right? So there are the two ways. Absorption is the full cost, but you have that problem of over and under absorption. Marginal. Remove the problem. We only look at the variable cost per unit. Okay? Carry on though. Um, during Z uh, January, Z produced 50,000 desks and sold 45,000. Remember, the fact that we produced more than we sold must mean that our inventory levels went up by the 5,000. Do you agree? The profit was calculated at 220,000 using absorption costing. He says, what would the profit be using marginal? Well, do, do remember, and I'm sorry I say again, to go through all profit statements and all the logic at this stage just will be wasting your time. You must learn and remember the rule Marginal costing and absorption costing will end up giving different profits. The reason they give different profits is because inventories are valued differently. I'm sorry, I'm about, I'm about to write it down, so just listen. We'll get different profits. The only reason is because inventories are valued differently. Absorption here, 23. Marginal would be only at 20. And the only reason inventories are valued differently is because one includes fixed overheads and one doesn't. The difference, and you must learn this rule, the difference between
absorption profit and marginal profit. I say again, without repeating the whole thing, it's only ever because of inventory values. And the only reason inventory values are different is because of the fixed overheads. It's always the fixed overheads in inventory. Clearly there can be inventory at the beginning and end of the year. It's the net effect. All you're ever looking at is the change in inventory. So for our question, what's the change in inventory over the year? Or month? I've said it, but you tell me. By how much will our inventory levels change in this month? Say again. Uh, yeah, yeah. The difference between what you produce and what you sell. Here I produced more than I sold. The inventory increases by 5,000 units. The inventory values will be different by the fixed overheads. In this question it's three dollars. And so the net difference between opening and closing the change is 15,000. We've one problem remaining, but in terms of numbers, inventory values will be 15 different. The profit, absorption marginal, the difference will be 15. So before we deal with the last problem here, is everybody happy about how I've got the amount? And I say again, I'm sorry, reading for a fourth time. If you've forgotten or you're worried about the logic, you'll have to see me separately. Or look back in the textbook or something. In the exam, you're not tested on why. You know, now's the time to be sorted. In the exam, it's a rule. It's got to be fast. It's got to be automatic. <coughs> uh, the only remaining thing, of course, because again, there'd always be two similar answers available, um, is here we want the marginal profit it's going to be 15,000 different than absorption but of course it could be 15 higher it could be 15 lower you agree? well remember the rule if inventory increases can anyone remember? but you must learn it if inventory increases, which one will give the higher profit, absorption or marginal? It is absorption, yeah. If inventory increases, absorption gives the higher profit. Whereas, and of course, if you've learnt one, the other's automatic, if inventory falls, and appreciate here, you don't know what opening inventory was, but had I told you that we sold more than we produced, it would mean inventory was falling, you agree? And if inventory falls, well, I say you only need to learn one, because the other has to be the opposite. But in fact, marginal gives the higher profit. So again, ask me if you need about logic, but otherwise you must learn effectively those two rules. The difference is always that arithmetic. And secondly, this rule about which is high, which is lower. Uh, and even then, be careful, it's astonishingly easy, even when you know the rule, to make a silly mistake and do it the wrong way. But let's hope I don't. Here I was given you, I'd given you the absorption profit at 220. 
we've worked out the difference was what? Was it 15? And so the marginal profit, obviously I could have given either and you go the other way, but which way round? Here inventory's gone up, absorption therefore would be higher, the marginal therefore will be lower at 205. All right? But obviously read carefully. I could have given you the marginal profit, work the other way. But if you understood me, that's just being careful, obviously. Not making silly mistakes. Okay?